At this time, I'd like to turn the presentation over to our speaker today. Uh, Dr. Stephan Mall is a hematologist at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill Thrombosis Center. Welcome and go ahead, Dr. Mall. Thank you very much. I would like to take the next 40 to 45 minutes to talk about a few issues about blood clots, mostly DVT and PE, what I think is clinically important for uh, patients and their families to know. The topics I would like to address is first some basics, then talk about the symptoms of DVT and PE and related um, clinical diagnoses, how to make an appropriate diagnosis, issues about therapy with blood thinners, and then finally complications of blood clots. Regarding the basics, I want to define a few words that we will be using. Thrombus uh, is a blood clot. A DVT or deep vein thrombosis is a blood clot in one of the deep veins, uh, i.e. the major veins and typically the leg or the arm, but can also be in the abdomen or around the brain. Most DVTs occur in the leg. A PE is a pulmonary embolism, which is a blood clot in the lung. An embolus is a blood clot that has traveled, typically from the leg to the lung. And then finally, post-thrombotic syndrome is the term used for long-term damage of the leg or possibly the arm after a DVT. Brief basics on the anatomy. We are not very much talking about arterial blood clots today. We focus on what you see on the right side are the vein clots. Uh, but to get the terminology right, arteries are the blood vessels that carry the blood away from the heart into the extremities, into the inner organs, and veins are the blood vessels that slowly lead the blood back to the heart. The differences between arterial and venous clots, and if I would like to mention uh, arterial clots, if an arterial clot occurred in one of the big arteries leading to the extremities, uh, this leads to a damage to the extremity, which is called gangrene. Uh, the extremity is cold because there's a lack of blood flow. It turns white. Later on, the extremity can uh, become dead and become black, and it's extremely painful. An arterial clot uh, in one of the carotid arteries leads to stroke or if the short symptoms are short-lived, a TIA or mini-stroke. And if a clot occurs in one of the coronary arteries, this is called a heart attack or myocardial infarction. Vein clots, the main topic of our discussion today, are clots in the veins, typically in the pelvis of the leg, which impair the outflow of blood out of the extremity. So we still pump blood into the extremity, but it does not flow back. So the extremity swells up, becomes painful. Since blood is bluish, reddish, it becomes, the discoloration is bluish purple, and the extremity feels warm. If a clot occurs in the lung, then this is called a PE, and the patient uh, may experience shortness of breath, chest pain, particularly when taking a deep breath in, cough, bloody phlegm, and an unexplained fast heartbeat above, let's say, 100 per minute. Now, why do um, patients develop blood clots? Again, I want to say a few words on arterial clots because they're very different to vein clots. In arterial clots, typically the blood vessel is already damaged. There's arteriosclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries. There's plaque formation. It's typically cholesterol, and the blood vessel is narrowed. And on top of this narrowing, a little blood clot will lead to obstruction of the blood flow and thus to heart attack, stroke, or gangrene. The vein clots are quite different. The blood vessels are not obviously damaged. There's no arteriosclerosis, and clots form in these seemingly normal blood vessels. So it seems appropriate to think that the majority of issues that lead to vein clots are problems with the blood itself, i.e. clotting disorders, thrombophilias, or when the blood does not flow right to, through the veins, such as with immobility after surgery, when one is hospitalized, this puts the patient at increased risk for DVT or PE. The risk factors for the arterial clots on the left side and the vein clots on the right side are also quite different. Um, in arterial clots, it's typically the risk factors that lead to arteriosclerosis, the hardening of the arteries. Smoking is a big risk factor, overweight, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes. The vein clots, as mentioned, the risk factors are immobility, overweight, 
surgery and trauma, then estrogens such as contraceptives, pregnancy, hormone replacement make for unclear reasons the blood thicker. Cancer produces clotting proteins or clotting promoting um, factors. And then as number six, clotting disorders also referred to as thrombophilias which can either be inherited or acquired. And we will talk about these a little later on more in detail. Now the drugs used um, are also somewhat different in arterial and venous clots because the clot structure is different. In the arteries that we mentioned, clots are made up out of these yellowish orange platelets as well as clotting proteins that you see in purple uh, called fibrin. Now the platelets are made slick by so-called antiplatelet drugs and the main one is aspirin but there's also Plavix, Ticlid, the neurologists use in stroke prevention Agronox and then the naturally occurring products garlic, ginkgo, vitamin E have some antiplatelet effect even though it's not clear how significant this is really to protect people from arterial clots. Now certainly blood thinners, the anticoagulants can also be used. These are drugs that prevent the fibrin from forming and these are heparin, warfarin and the new oral anticoagulants which we will talk about a little later on, Prodax and Xarelto. Um, these blood thinners or anticoagulants have a higher risk for bleeding and in arterial clots they are equally effective overall to aspirin and Plavix and thus typically aspirin and Plavix are used in arterial clots and not the blood thinners. Now on the venous side you can see that the clot is ma mainly mo made up out of fibrin and there's only an occasional platelet in there. So it seems natural that the antiplatelet agents would not do very much to prevent blood clots in the veins i.e. DVT and PE. So aspirin and Plavix are not being used for prevention of DVTPE or in most situations not. It is likely not effective before you take a long distance airline travel to take an aspirin thinking that it would protect you from DVT or PE. What is needed to prevent DVT and PE or to treat clots are blood thinners, the anticoagulants. And these are heparin and the low molecular weight heparins most commonly in the U.S. used the enoxaparin or Lovenox, but also available fragment inoheparin or extra. And then the oral agent warfarin or Coumadin and Jantoven as the brand names and Prodax and Xarelto. These prevent more or less the fibrin from forming and are the mainstays of the treatment of and prevention of DVT and PE. So the key points from this basic section are probably summarizing the anatomy and the clot structure that aspirin and similar drugs are not useful to prevent vein in the clots in veins, i.e. DVT and PE. And it is important for each of us to know our DVT and PE risk factors. And for DVT and PE, that's immobility, hospitalization, overweight, uh, estrogen use, pregnancy, and a family history, as well as clotting disorders.